You've talked about the COMELEC program, Contra Bigay. And I think uh, one of the focus areas in our roundtable last year was how do we address vote buying? Are we optimistic about Contra Bigay? Um, and maybe other issues on the barangay elections that we're missing? Because it's going to happen next month already. We know there are so many killings also happening um, where barangay officials are victims. So let's start our roundtable uh, talking about the barangay elections muna siguro. Test, yang kontra, yang committee on kontra bigay test case yan. <laughs> it's the first time that the complex is doing it. But, okay yung, ano, the, the res complex resolution, but the question is on the implementation. First is yung organizational structure. Ano ba yung expectations sa civil society? Second, uh, ang daming presumptions, no? na pwede siyang i-contest. So, how is COMELEC going to handle those? Third is my condition, my, my requirement, may, meron din siyang provision for witness protection because we express the concern, uh, the reason why cases are not filed or they just die, no? Uh, when, when the COMELEC finds uh, basis, no, to prosecute is ang primary concern namin is the safety and security of the witness. Not only of the witness himself, but the family or even extended family. Kasi sa local sila eh. Diba? We ask this because in the past elections, we know there, there, all, there are already videos circulating. But um, everybody's saying we cannot file cases unless the one who took the video will testify. Tinitinan ko yung structural dun sa um, vote buying. So, uh, ang parang uh, vulnerable area siya is if if those who give the money are able to trace how the man, how the vote turned out. Meron silang middle person, di ba, barangay captain for example, no? Bigyan mo ng pera, sabihan mo sa kanya, ikaw bahala, i-convert to votes. So pag habang natitrace yan siya, Ma maging week at week si barangay captain. A ano lang, hindi kailan barangay captain, I'm just using that for convenience, but I'm, I'm not alluding that they're the ones in the middle. So, how, uh, tingin ko kung if there's a way to ensure that the matrix yung pera at conversion to votes, baka pede. I don't know how, how we can help as a church. No, our network, no, because we have we have eighty five social action centers in the Philippines. In every diocese, we have a social action center or caritas center. How we can mobilize our people on the ground uh, on this? No, but my my question is this. I think the same question. What what are the safety me measures for our people who will get involved in this? Activity, this activity, we know already uh, the security problem. No? Uh, so, yan ang isang question ko dyan. Ano ang mechanism? Uh, baka mapasubo natin yung maraming tao na wala naman tayong security uh, uh, measures no? uh, in case uh, there will be mga, uh, mga sabi natin, mga problema in, in, in the engagement. Kaya rin po ang makakapag-witness ng election violence on the ground. Ano po ba ang sitwasyon um, we're nearing the barangay elections? There have been reports. Kumusta po ang election violence? Magulo kasi mga kamag-anak, mga magkakaibigan. No? And may mga barangay kami may patayan. The situation now, alam nyo mga kandidato, mga manok ngayon yan ng mga politiko. Either congressman, ni mayor, that's very, very, very clear. And they pour in money. They pour in money. Uh, in that. So, uh, another, uh, they're very subtle ngayon. Uh, they, are, they are becoming experts in boot buying. <laughs> Hindi na yung ano, hindi na yung cash to ano. Ano na online na. They, I don't know how how we will monitor that, no? What we are trying to do, 
we we mobilize people to document silently. Documentation is important. So our justice and peace uh, groups are being tasked to document. Simple lang, simple data gathering. Uh, uh, parang ginawa namin noon sa EJK. <laughs> Nag-document lang kami tapos tinago namin yung mga documents in case we need these documents naka-ready. Parang ganon. Not right away exposing, you know, people. Uh, baka we cannot protect them. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. No? But uh, so far, that's our initiatives. So it, it really shows that it's not a simple issue. You can, it, it can happen right in front of us, but if no one is willing to testify, we can document, but if that documentation will not be accepted in courts. Ang realidad po kasi sa pagpa-file ng kaso, kung hindi mo naman yan buhay o hindi yan yung ginagawa mo sa araw-araw, lalo na ikaw ay normal na tao na may day job, after elections, lahat halos nawawala na interes eh. Dun sa tandem mo, Carmela, Ano yung hope? Uh, kami, hopeful kami kasi in the discussions of COMELEC for Contrabigay, ang malaki talagang role ay mga pulis. And yung pulis, in one of the consultations, sinabi nila, ang problema nila pag may kaso na sa fiscal, hinahanapan sila doon sa warrantless arrest. E meron ngayon development, hopefully, sumunod po si uh, Lumabas na Puto, mag i ng resolution si COMELEC for the guidelines on warrantless arrest. Para at least mayroon pong document na pangahawakan yung mga police natin when they go after the vote buyers and the vote sellers. And when the case is filed, mayroon din silang sasabihin kay fiscal na mayroong resolution si Comelec on this guidelines. Yun nga lang, uh, kailangan pa rin natin mabantayan na hindi tumaabuso. Of course, given the track record ngayon, lalo na madayo tayo nakikita ng mga abuso. So, we need to see that this uh, guidelines or this regulation is not abused. And we also would want to see na hindi lang foot soldiers yung makakasuhan. We would want to go after yung mga principals po. Kasi pag foot soldier, ano lang yan eh. Yan, sir. yan lang po. To me, it's more the perspective than enforcement. Ang pinag-uusapan sa kontrabigay kasi, enforcement. Of course, very important ang enforcement. Pag may nakulong, malaking deterrence yan. Pero maganda yung tanong ni ma'am, deterrence ba talaga the way it's being done? Saka kung IBP, may legal aid, may question ako doon. Paano ko ang lumapit sa inyo yung hinuli ng vote buying? ba Siya yung mahirap. Hinuli ako, kinulong ako kasi nag tumanggap daw ako ng... What? So sino i-represent natin? Eh, kontrabigay is... Dapat i-prosecute yung vote buying. Paano, ano yung... Pero, pag tingnan mo dapat yung vote buying, yung buyer talaga ang kwan dito kasi siya yung nakikinabang eh. Pero hindi sa vote buying tinitingnan yung anggulong yun, kundi sa... Saan galing yung pera niya na pambili? At bakit siya bumibili? Nang kwan? Kasi siguro... Kaya ngayon, abuse of state resources to me is very important. Kasi that's, that's, that is what I want to look at rather than vote buying. I'll just make vote buying less effective. Pangalawa, if it's enforcement, yung concept kasi ng vote, vote buying is a crime. It's like pickpocket. It's like hold up. So, it can, hindi, yung book kailangang asahan ng COMELEC para ma-enforce ang vote buying. Hindi trabaho ng COMELEC pag crime na yon. It's a law enforcement problem. So, police yan. Piskal yan. Ngayon nga, pwedeng mag preliminary investigation kahit piskal yan eh. You don't have to go through COMELEC. So, if it is looked at as an ordinary crime in election, it should not just be a problem of COMELEC. It's a law enforcement problem. We want to talk about other ways we could deter um, the exchange of money from even happening. Uh, so, sinabi niyo abuse of state resources. It's part and parcel of the Anti-Money Laundering Act that we have the suspicious transaction for reporting. So, it's not within, it's not just reliant on the threshold of 500,000 and above to be reported to the AMLC. In fact, each compliance officer of each financial institution has to report suspicious transactions. So, the threshold for suspicious transaction is really very low, like the source of income cannot be justified. 
So, especially now in the Philippines, we are in the gray list. And part of the international community ask is to see whether or not the Philippines, while it tracks suspicious transactions, is it able to prosecute suspicious transactions um, done by individuals? So it's part and parcel of the question. Can we, like, in the same way that we have this type of fora, maybe we can also invite the uh, electronic money issuers and the financial technology communities to, to engage us. My position here is that if we are able to put them in the fold or make them aware that these are something that they should also flag, uh, engage the compliance officers because usually the each uh, fintech company has a compliance department. It has an AML team, anti-money laundering team that actually focuses on monitoring day-to-day -day transactions. And if this can be included as part of the scenarios to flag. For example, in, in the normal context, they flag already online sellers because these people don't pay taxes. They don't have BIR registrations. So if there, were, there are transactions that are online in nature, they, the AML officers usually investigate or call, even though it's on a sampling basis. There's a deterrence because you don't want to get a call from your related bank because at the end of the day, it passes through a bank after the financial uh, fintech. No, So you don't want, it also inconveniences them because the entire amount can be frozen, not just in your account, not just the transaction itself. So those things are immediate in nature and these are already available as a mechanism. We just have to be able to tap them.